They say whenever I go into my stage mode that my voice goes higher. I don't believe it. They that's not higher, that's just excited. Oh, that's excitement? So what was that? You just kind of mellowed out towards the end of the day or what? Oh, because my throat, no, it's a little bit. I'm still getting over my cold. I feel a lot better when my cold's almost gone. But yeah, I don't think my voice goes up whenever I talk. They think I do. I just think it's when I get excited, I might, my, my pitch might go a little bit higher, that's all. But when, when you get excited, your hands go more. My hands go more, that's my, that's my stage. That's just for stage, stage present. I mean, you want me to do my, you want me to do my videos like this? I would. I would. How do you, how do you value these items that you want to buy? Customers. Well, they are just trinkets knick and trash. Knickknacks, yes, trinkets, trash, knickknacks. That's what we call them whenever we. So go I kind of know what people are gonna be willing to pay, because the whole thing that we do is get it in and get it out. When you buy off the public, you, you got to understand. You know, people people typically, or I don't know, half the people that bring stuff in, they really need money. You know, they're bringing stuff. Gas money. <laughs> they, they're bringing stuff in because they're they're desperate, or you know, I mean, don't get me wrong. We got a we got a lot of dealers that bring us in merchandise that might go to the pick and pay at the uh, Salvation Army, or even people that pick in the trash or pick through donation bins. You know, but but a lot of people need money, and, and occasionally you get people in here that you know that are um, you know maybe maybe addicted to drugs or yes. or. Um, Alcohol. Alcohol or having a tough life, you know? So you kinda, you know, it's always something to think about is your safety and your security while you're here. So if you're gonna buy off the public, you really you really need to have, you know, you can't be abrasive with anybody you're buying from. You just have to be more matter of fact about it. Um, you know, you have to, you have to, show empathy to all these customers because you know you, you also get people that try to take advantage of you or complain about every price that you give them. I mean, Diana's had some people like that, right? Oh, they, yeah, quite a few. <laughs> they get mad at you, you know, but you know, our thing is you offer cash, you offer store credit. If it's something $100 or more, you offer consignment. Um, I'll talk a lot about consignment with a customer. Um, because if they're interested, you know that they just want to get the item out of their home and they're willing to wait for the money. But we we have a lot of people, man, it's, I'll give you $10 for that or I'll give you $15 store credit and they get mad. They, they expect that their valuables are valuable and they're, they are to them, but they aren't to us. And you, probably not like this. This is not yeah, valuable. Is, I'm just using this as an example, but but let's say that this was $100 in a store, right? So somebody goes and pays $100 for this on, on a Friday, right? And then brings it to us on a Monday. So if it's $100 in the store, we're gonna sell it here for $50. So if we're, yeah, so this being a B item, it's not an A item, it's probably actually a C item. You know, <laughs> you know, it's, if we're gonna sell it for $50, we offer them three options, 30%, cash, 50% store credit, or 60% on consignment. So this, they would get $15 cash for this if they want cash. So s some people in their head, they're saying, I just paid $100 for it, and you're trying to buy it off me for $15, and they think that's unfair. But if you look at, you know, whenever you add in that we have to make money, and there's a lot of times we have to tell people, you know, we have to make money on this stuff. We just can't buy stuff for what it's worth, right? If you buy stuff for what it's worth, you can't sell it for any more than that. You have to buy it at a, at a discount in order to make money on it, you know? So unless it's, if it's an A item, we'll pay upwards of 50% for it. But a B, or, B item, we're only paying 15, I'm sorry, 30% of what the item's worth. So you just have to learn to deal with the people that get upset with that kind of stuff. And, and normally if you speak rationally to them and explain, you know, how, you know, how we have to make money, how we do things, you know, they, they, they normally come around and understand uh, you will get customers that think, you know, they got an iPad and it's worth, you know, new it's 400 so they want to get $350 out of it. You're like, wait a minute, <laughs> you know, there's, there's no money in it for us. At that, you know, you're crazy. I want to buy the iPad, but, you know, especially Apple fanatics, you know, they, they always want big bucks out of their stuff. But, you know, you just got to learn that there's, there's always people to deal with. It's probably safe to not buy alone. You probably should have other people around you uh, just in case something does go south. I've been doing this for 20 years and, and I'm gonna say 
you know, the, there's very rarely that I ever had like a physical confrontation with anybody. You know, I've had to throw some people out and some people threaten to kick my ass a few times, but you know, that just comes with the territory. I've had that here. <laughs> yeah, Diana's had that here, yeah. so. So depending on the, on the kind of area that you live in, some towns you go into pawn shops, everything's behind, you know, bulletproof glass. You can't even get to the people, right? You know, um, so just be careful of that whenever you're buying. And, and also, you know, let's address stolen merchandise, which I am shocked because, so in New York, I was like the only guy in town for a long time. So I would all the time have the police in our store taking merchandise from me because it was stolen, uh, which is just part of this business. Now, we've been open almost 18 months here, and I don't think we've had anything. We've never had a police officer in here asking about stolen merchandise, which is, which is ironic. I, I, I... We had the one wig incident, but the police didn't come for that. Yeah, so when, when a police officer, whenever, come on, Tammy, you can come by. You'll be famous for a little while. Oh, now get her. <laughs> so, so this is how, how we handle the, the stolen merchandise. So first of all, so there's a culpability factor in knowing if it's stolen. You have to know it's stolen in order to be able to be persecuted for having stolen merchandise, okay? So like there's, there was a time where somebody brought me uh, a game system that there, I knew it had to be stolen, right? I called the police and I let them know that I have a game system here, had somebody else's name, somebody else's name when we booted it up. Mm -hmm. This wasn't here, this was in New York. And the police told me like, Mr. Schultz, if an item is not reported stolen, it's not stolen in our book. So unless there's a record of it being reported stolen, they don't consider it stolen. Even if I have proof, one time some guy sold us like all these, uh, all these cameras brand new digital cameras when digital cameras weren't on phones and they all had brand new wrappers on them from Sears. I, ca I called the police and told them, they're like, sir, nobody's filed a report of stolen cameras from Sears. So they're not stolen. I said, well, well, can I buy them? He's like, you can buy anything you want except stolen merchandise. And these aren't considered stolen. So I ended up, what I ended up doing was call Sears and Sears brought down their lead investigator and it ended up being like this big like internal theft ring that was going on and all these Sears and they were stealing like millions of dollars. They had video of these guys and everything. So I had, I had all these cameras, probably 40 or 50 cameras, brand new in the box at the time. They're four, five, six, seven hundred dollar cameras, right? And what did Sears do? Nothing. Nothing. I, you know, I had them sitting there for, for six months thinking they're gonna cut. No, they didn't give a shit. They had the person, you know what they did to the person? No. Had them barred. <laughs> they had them barred from Sears. Their insurance covered all that. Yeah, yeah, it was ridiculous. So, so I mean, I don't, obviously I don't advocate ever buying anything. If, if, it's, if it's something that's fishy, I don't want to buy it. I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to buy it. I don't want anything to do with stolen merchandise. Uh, let me address one more issue with stolen merchandise too. Is there's a lot of times where, let's say, let's say Diana's son stole her ring and sold it to me. So then Diana comes in and says, you have my ring. And I say to her, miss, this is not stolen unless you report it stolen, right? So she's gonna say, well, I'm not gonna have my son arrested. So I legally, she had, legally has no recourse over me, right? Now she has her son arrested, the police will come confiscate the ring and they will put it into evidence, right? And then she will get it returned after the case is, is finished. But legally, she can't, take that ring, she has no legal rights to that ring unless she presses charges. So she presses, and a lot of parents won't press charges on their kids. I don't know how many times like a niece or a nephew has stolen from, from some parents and then, and then they want the merchandise back. Now, when they come in my store, if they wanna buy it back, they can buy it back from me. I let them buy it back and I do give them a discount on it. I don't charge them full retail, but certainly, I don't, you know, I deserve to be compensated for that, for that transaction. I deserve to be compensated for that transaction, you know, but, it, but I would rather have them call the police and have the person arrested because then justice is served and maybe that person won't do it again. So many parents don't press charges on kids, on grandkids, on ne nieces, nephews, on neighbors' kids because they don't want to get the police and they don't want to ruin their lives. But, you know, and actually, in actuality, you know, you're probably perpetuating the situation with these kids. But, you know, I get it, I got kids. I wouldn't want to call the cops on my kids. I would just drag them home and beat their ass or something. But, 
you know. So be careful of stolen merchandise. But it's if you're in this business, it's gonna it's gonna happen. It's gonna it's gonna sometime rear its ugly head. So so be prepared and be ready for it. Yeah, you can see that. So we videotape every transaction that we do here. Don't we have two cameras? Oh, we have another one right over there. That one goes yeah. So we we videotape every transaction that we do. Anything that we buy off the public, we videotape. We take everybody's license, and, and like I said before, we use our point of sale system, it's called Consign Pro, and we can, uh, uh, every, every customer that comes in gets a customer number, we put it, we get their license, we put in their license, their phone number, their address, uh, and it keeps track of all their inventory, so when a customer s sells us something, we put their customer number on this, on the ticket, on the price tag, and so we always know who sold us every item in the store. We can also print off the historical data of that one customer. So, and it doesn't expire, it doesn't go away. So I can, if, if D Diana was selling to me for years, or actually if Alex, come here Alex. Here, show Alex, <laughs> Alex doesn't wanna be on camera. <laughs> so if Alex was selling to me for years, I can print off last five years of merchandise that Alex, that Alex sold to us. So what happens, let's say that you do get something that is stolen, uh, the police will come in, you're gonna you're gonna give them their driver's license number. You're gonna print off their contract, which has all that information on it. Then you can print off all the items you ever bought from them, how much you paid for them, the inventory numbers, and then it shows if it's sold or still in the inventory of the store. So we have, and then we give them the videotape of the last time the person was in selling us stuff. So pretty much we wrap the case up for the police officers. We have all the evidence for them if they do find some stolen merchandise here. And whenever you do that for the police, you know, they're, they're a lot more great. I mean, you haven't had to deal with it yet, but they're a lot more grateful that, that you helped them out in that way. And they, they don't really give you a problem when they have to come and come in to see you. Now, when they come in to see you, if you just want to be standoff and don't want to talk to them and you know tell them to talk to your lawyer or something, then they're going to give you a hard time and they're always going to be on your ass. And that's not what you want in the business of buying and selling because you're always you always have to buy you know and God forbid they you know they try to impose some rules or you know we we're, we're a liquidation store a resale shop so we don't have the same rules as a pawn shop. A pawn shop lends money out with interest. All right, so they are they are uh, under the they have a banking license in most states. All right, so we don't need a banking license because all we do is buy off the public. We're the same as a played against sports, a once upon a child, you know, any store, any place that just buys for cash, you know, outright. So I mean, we do take all the documentations, we videotape it, licenses, you know. So if any time we do have something stolen, you know, we we have everything ready uh, for the police if they want to prosecute. I mean, I lost, I, I think I lost $400,000 in a few hours in my crypto investments. I mean, the, the good thing, the good thing is that, what's that? She said, I, did, I didn't lose money, because I'm still up, I'm still in profit, even with that big of a loss, I'm still in profit, so she's right, I didn't lose the money, but it did go down that much, and it hurt, it hurt. Imagine losing $400,000 in a couple hours. But, you know, I believe, I. Like I said, I believe in the revolution. I believe the future is, 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 is digitized. I believe that, that money will go away just like CDs and DVDs and you know, th music, all that kind of stuff has gone away. Everything's going to be digitized. You know? so, so no matter what happens in the short term in the crypto market, I'm in it for the longer term. I'm in it for the long term. So the truth is, you know, I have, so many Bitcoin and so many Ethereum. I didn't lose any Bitcoin or Ethereum. The value versus the US dollar went down, but I didn't lose any Bitcoin or Ethereum. And know what I did today? You know what I did when it dipped? I bought more. I bought a lot more. So we'll see and I'll let you know. I'll give you an update on my uh, crypto situation here soon.